But it goes back to when I was about 12 years of age. I remember appearing at a Christmas concert, you know, the carols and so forth. I was given a little solo to sing at school. And the teacher noticed that I had probably quite an outstanding voice for a boy and mentioned this to my parents, who were Welsh and who loved singing, attended the Welsh chapel and after the services at night, the organist used to come to our house and we had a harmonium. My sister used to play and we used to sit around this harmonium and uh, harmonize singing hymns. So I, I think that more or less developed my interest in singing. And as I had a voice, this teacher said to my parents, why not have it trained? So this organist at this chapel, his name was Tom Evans, he had a, a Welsh title because he came from Wrexham, but he was a very kind of notable personality in Welsh music in Manchester. He had the title of Penker Canyon, which um, I think translated means something like Master of Manchester Music. However, I went to him and uh, had lessons with him, and it was not long before he entered me for competitions and musical festivals all up and down the country. And I was winning first prize everywhere. This was as a tenor? No, this was as, as a, a boy. As a boy, as a, as a boy soprano. I wasn't in a choir, mm -hmm. or a cathedral choir of any kind. He trained me as an adult. Yes. And then when I was about 16, there were signs of the top notes going. When these notes disappeared, he said, don't sing anymore. And during my adolescent years, I continued with him, studying the piano, harmony, counterpoint, a little composition, you know, making little string quartets and so forth. And then, about the age of 20 or 21, he said, well, now is the time to see if your voice has developed into anything at all. I was hoping all the time that it would, into a tenor. And so that day came when he tried my voice and he said that I think you're going to be a tenor. Of course, during those years, I had been admiring singers, especially one, Richard Tauber. I liked the way he presented his voice. It had a certain appeal for me. His personality had an appeal for me. His musicianship, because, as you know, he tried to conduct a little. He played the piano. He composed a little. But in all, he was an all-round musician as well as being a fine singer, and this was my ideal, and I hoped that probably one day I could be something similar. And then you set about training your voice with the idea of being professional, or had some other career been in your mind? No, the only other thing that might have happened to me was that whilst I was at school, I was pretty good at drawing and sketching, and I was offered a scholarship at the School of Art in Manchester. For some reason, and I do not know to this day why I refused it, but there must have been something guiding me to refuse it. I did so, and I left school and started a job, which was an awful job, and remained at this job for several years, miserably sitting at the office there, wondering whether I could ever become what I wanted to be, a singer. But after several years, I got my chance. So the happy day came when I said to my director at the office, I'm going to ask if I can leave next week because... He said, why? I said, because I'm going to start at the Royal College of Music in Manchester. Whilst I was on the continent in the forces, I had the opportunity of studying in my spare time at the Brussels Conservatoire. That led, when I was posted to Norway, being introduced to somebody in Norway connected with the Oslo Philharmonic. And they engaged me, and I introduced Britain's Les Illuminations there, which led to me being invited at Copenhagen and in Sweden also to do the same thing. But that was valuable experience to me and kind of introduction to the professional life, so that when I came back to England, Britain wanted to know who was this young soldier who'd been singing his music abroad. Yes. So I went to see him and, uh, of course, sang for him immediately engaged me for the rape of Lucretia at Glyndebourne. So that more or less started off my career, operatically, 
after Glymwood, that led to me appearing at the Covent Garden. Carl Rankle, I think, came down to Glymwood and was wanting somebody to take over the part of Peter Grimes. And uh, he approached me, and this was particularly interesting to yes. me, so I accepted, of course. And at the same season, I think it was, I appeared with the English Opera Group at Covent Garden doing The Rape of Lucretia. Then we went abroad with the opera group. That was an experience, doing opera in places like um, Zurich and so forth, and uh, Amsterdam. And that more or less started my career, if I may say so, internationally. Yes. Visiting de different countries. The point where perhaps I can think is probably the most important, especially going to America, which has opened up a completely new field for me, was in 1953 when I was chosen to do Troilus in William Walton's Troilus and Cressida at Covent Garden. And at one of those performances, the director of the San Francisco Opera attended, came to see me afterwards and asked me if I would like to do this in San Francisco as they were going to present the American premiere of this work. This was the following year. Of course, I was only too pleased to accept. And that has led me to appearing in America, not only in opera, but in concert, ever since, right up to this year. Having thus established yourself internationally, as you say, and at home in these two fields, uh, how did you feel at that time that your career was going to go? Have you always felt confident about it? Yes, I've always felt confident about it. Um, not in a conceited manner, yeah. but confident because, although I've... The voice may not be outstanding uh, as regards great operatic tenore, il tenore italiano, and so forth. <laughs> uh, it is a most useful voice because yes. it's basically a lyrical voice, and yet it has a dramatic quality, which has meant that I've been able to do quite a number of varied things, yes. um, from Mozart, the Mozart roles, to perhaps um, a work like The Song of the Earth by Mahler, which really needs a very dramatic tenor for the first one and a lyric tenor for the other two yes. songs. Or perhaps doing a role like Bacchus in Ariadne of Naxos by Strauss, which really needs a, a held in tenor. I think it's very significant that one of your earliest successes was with contemporary music, because it's in this field, probably, that you have made a tremendous reputation for the ease with which you sing this music. Um, do you have perfect pitch? No, I don't, and I'm very glad I haven't. You might be surprised at me saying that, but I think it would be an annoyance to me to have perfect pitch because, as you know, if something was not the correct pitch, as sometimes pitches differ between one country and another, if you weren't singing in the correct pitch, it would I think it would annoy me. On the other hand, it would be helpful in actually pitching some of these awkward intervals yes, that appear yes, in modern yes. music. No, I haven't got perfect pitch, but what I'm blessed with is fairly good musicianship, which helps me to more or less analyse a work, a phrase, and more or less immediately, and know exactly what I'm doing, that I'm singing from probably a major chord to an augmented fifth, an augmented ninth. I can see it clearly straight away in my mind. And um, I think it's terribly helpful. Also, what is helpful to me is that I learn very quickly mainly through the photographic method. I must see every bar, every note, as I go over each page. When I turn the page, I can see it onto the next page, whether it's a 3-8 bar, a 5-8 bar, a 4-4 bar, and so forth. The words, the notes, and everything. For instance, in Moses and Aaron by Schoenberg, and probably the most difficult and most complex music I've ever had to sing, I've had to learn it this way, every bar, every note I can see, as well as hear. In your general preparation, say, of a, of a leader of songs, how do you approach the interpretation of a song? I think, as most singers would do, first reading through the text, the poem, getting the meaning of it. Secondly, working with a pianist to, to try to get to know the sounds of the structure of the harmonies or whatever passage or 
modulation or whatever is going on underneath the m melodic line, and then fusing the two together. I think that is the usual approach, and it's, it's my approach, really. And what do you feel in the interpretation of the song? What do you feel is the most important element for you? I think that singers... <coughs> of course, there are different kinds of singers, aren't there? There are people who go to the opera, especially in Italy, to hear beautiful, strong sounds from the, the human voice. Mm. This is one kind of singing, of course, but it's not my kind of singing. A singer to me is somebody who has 50% voice and 50% musicianship and integrity, who can use this gift which they've been given as a kind of medium for their thoughts and for their feelings, their heart feelings, their physical feelings, and fuse the two together. In other words, act with the voice. And this is the kind of singer that gives me far more satisfaction than someone who walks down from the middle of the stage down to the footlights and bellows out a top B flat. What advice would you give to anybody? Now, looking back, not that you're at the end of your career, but looking back on this very successful career you're enjoying, do you feel that you have always done the right thing in your, in, in your approach to singing? Yes, from this simple point alone that I was given the gift of a voice. And I think it was my duty, as I believe most people have a duty when they're given a gift similar to this, to pursue that gift to their very best ability. I would advise anybody who has a gift of any kind to follow that, to pursue it and to develop it and to study as much as possible. If they find it doesn't work out, than to leave it and mm. do something else. But I think I was fortunate. I pursued mine. You may say luck came my way, perhaps it did, but I took every opportunity of everything that came my way, and made the best of it, and I was serious, and I didn't fool around. I tried to do my best, and so it, it paid off. <laughs>